time with Mr. Nomada. He will be starting soon. Oh, oh, oh. story time with Mr. Nomada. Where all your dreams come true. Oh, oh, oh. He brings to life your favorite stories with a great big smile. You won't leave lonely. Won't you start? All the reading, I just can't wait to be hearing Story time with Mr. Lamada He will be starting soon oh. Story time with Mr. Lamada Where all your dreams come true Oh he brings to life your favorite stories with a great big smile. You won't leave lonely, won't you start? I'm reading, I just can't wait to be hearing. Good morning, good morning, and welcome to Storytime. Thank you so much for joining me today. Glad that we are here together. Another fantastic story awaits, and this one today coming from Elise Gravo, and of course, we're reading it with permission of the publishers, Chronicle Books of San Francisco. A very big good morning to you. Please, as always, let us know where you're joining in from and who is joining in with you, and I hope that you are excited for the brand new book that is out, and that is To Boldly Go. Coming to you tomorrow with Angela Darton and Lauren Summer coming to visit Storytime. So please, please do be on the lookout for that one. Join us if you can tomorrow for a wonderful Friday. But of course, today we do have a wonderful book to read together. Killer Underwear Invasion. Yes, Elise Gravo and of course, Chronicle Books of San Francisco. Thank you so much for joining in. I hope you're ready for this one. I hope you are comfortable and cozy wherever you are joining us from today. Thank you indeed for being here on Storytime. And of course, too, you know, we want to just thank you for joining us and helping build this wonderful community, wonderful positivity in this uh, space. Thank you. Thank you indeed. And uh, that's what uh, we're, we're here for. And that's what we're aiming for. Yes, a space that is welcoming to all. Thank you so much for joining in Storytime today. I am glad that you are here with us. Let us see this morning who is with us. Um, uh, today ready for a story. Good morning to you. How are you doing? Tara, McNamara, and of course, Erin and Clara in Chile, Massachusetts. Well, thank you so much for being here. Please do keep warm. Do stay warm. Good to see you here. Thank you so much for joining in story time today. Absolutely love it. And you say you are waiting for to boldly go to arrive at bookshop.org. Oh, I cannot wait for you to have it. It is indeed a beautiful one. And, um, you know, Talking about it, reading to boldly go and looking at the cover and everything um, was great. But once I actually got the copy in my hand and read the book and uh, author's note and everything, it is a whole different layer. And I cannot wait for you to get the book and enjoy it. And of course, um, before then, if it doesn't arrive by tomorrow, hopefully too, you can join us um, for, for our story time tomorrow and get to have a sneak peek. Thank you so much for joining in story time. Absolutely appreciate you. And good morning to you. How are you? Good morning, Sarah and Nathan in Windy, Illinois. Well, thank you for joining in today. Right on brand there, Illinois. Thank you for joining in. The kids are very, very much looking forward to um, today's book based on the title. And as a former English teacher, I'm looking forward to their learning more about valid and not valid sources. Win-win book today. <laughs> Love it. I know the title definitely draws you in, doesn't it? <laughs> Pardon the pun. <laughs> yes, Killer Underwear Invasion coming right up very shortly. Thank you for being here with us. Good morning to you one more time, Sarah and Nathan, and of course, Amanda West. Thank you so much for joining in today. Absolutely love it that we're here together. And of course, good morning to you, Garrick. 
And Kate, how are you doing out in rainy Pittsburgh? Where is Theo today? Thank you so much for joining in, Storytime. Glad indeed we're here together. Thank you for joining in. Always good to see, um, see you come back here to Storytime. And hopefully you've been able to catch all the recordings as well. Thank you for being here. Good morning to you out in Pittsburgh. Kate, Garrick. Thank you so much for joining us today. Welcome, welcome. And please remember, too, that we do have what to boldly go is out. It officially came out on the 17th. And um, um, tomorrow, on the 20th, we do have Angela Darton here with Lauren Summer. So please look out for that one. And, of course, Marietta. Apollonia also has a book coming out. Marietta of Marietta and Henry out in Massachusetts have a book coming out. And this one is called Jack the Library Cat. Look out for it March 1st, 2023. And look out for more exciting things to come around that book as well. Thank you so much for joining in. Join me on the other side of this short break when we're back for Killer Underwear Invasion coming right up. This one written and illustrated by Elise Gravel, and we're reading it with permission of Chronicle Books of San Francisco. Exciting, exciting, coming right up. So join me on the other side. Who else is with us before we go on our show break? Good morning to you, Sharon Lungo, and of course, Soraya. The title of this book has been making Soraya laugh since yesterday. <laughs> Love it, love it, love it. Me too, Soraya, me too. Thank you so much for joining in. And um, I think Sarah and Nathan are with you on that one as well. Thank you so much for joining in. Join me on the other side of this short break when we are back for more story time. <laughs> Hello, story time friends. My name is Angela Dalton and I'm an author of picture books. Some you may have even seen read right here on story time with Mr. Lamada. I'm excited to tell you about my brand new picture book called To Boldly Go, How Nichelle Nichols and Star Trek Help Advance Civil Rights. It comes out January 17th, and it's an amazing story about the legendary Nichelle Nichols and her role on Star Trek, which she left until a very special person reminded her about the impact that she was making, not just on television, but around the world. And I'm excited to tell you that myself and Lauren Semmer, the illustrator, will be coming here on January 20th to read the book to you and to answer any questions that you might have and to tell you a little bit about the book and how we came up with the idea for it. I hope that you'll join us again on January 20th right here in Storytime with Mr. LaMada. Until then, if you'd like to learn a little bit more about me, please visit me at AngelaDalton.com. Okay, now we got to get back to the story today on Storytime with Mr. LaMada. I hope you're enjoying it. I know I am. Okay, see you soon. Bye. Welcome back, indeed. Welcome back. Thank you for joining in. And thank you, Angela Darton. And congratulations again to you and Lauren Summer on your brand new book, To Boldly Go. All right, here we go. Today, our book is Killer Underwear Invasion. How to Spot Fake News, Disinformation, and Conspiracy Theories. And this one is written and illustrated by Elise Gravel, and we're reading it with permission of the publishers, Chronicle Books of San Francisco. Are you ready? <laughs> Are you ready? All right, here we go. And um, we're going to um, start off with, well, we do have six six different chapters in there to cover and um i'll see if we can get to three of those and i wish we could read all of it but we'll try and get to three of those um before we end and hopefully bring it back another time again but of course if you can find it at your local library find it so you can read all of it <laughs> all right so we're going to start with what is fake news have you heard that phrase before that term what is fake news? Chapter one. First, let me explain what news is. News is information about important stuff that's happening in the world right now. And fake news is, well, news that's fake. Does that help? Congratulations, it's news that is made up. We also call it 
disinformation. Yeah. We hear about fake news a lot these days, but it is nothing new. It has always existed. Really? Hear ye, hear ye! An evil magician turned the king into a goat. What? <laughs> is that true? Yes, we hear about fake news a lot these days. But it is nothing new. It has always existed. In 1835, the New York Sun published a series of articles that said that unicorns, human bats, and two-legged beavers had been discovered on the moon. Guess whether that was true or false. What do you think? <laughs> and you're right. That was false. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if you have the book, you can have the answers right there. Yeah. In 1835, the New York Sun published a series of articles that said unicorns, human bats, and two-legged beavers had been discovered on the moon. Guess whether that was true or false. And you were right. It is false. It was false. If fake news has always existed, why do we hear about it everywhere these days? Thanks to the internet, disinformation is everywhere these days. Oh, it is here, all these spaces. You got your phone, computer, newspapers, it is everywhere. It is more accessible. Thanks to the internet, disinformation is everywhere these days. Yeah. New technologies have made it easy to create false information that looks real, even when it isn't. Original photo, edited photo, and yikes! On the news they say, Scorpion invasion! But that's not true. It also makes it very easy to get people to see fake news. Dear heavens! to share it, and of course, unfortunately, to believe it. And fake news can be scary. It can, it can make people panic. Yeah. All this makes it very hard for people to know which news is true and which is false. But why do people make up news? Well, that is a great question. Why do people make up news? I wanted to look at this chapter, but I'm thinking we, um, we might want to look at why is disinformation such a bad thing? That will be chapter three. So we're going to skip chapter two. I want us to look at three and then we can go to six, um, how to tell real news from fake news. And I'm, I apologize for skipping chapters because there is so, so much information in here. But I think because of time, we're going to do that. So let's go to chapter three instead. Chapter three. And that's on page 23. Yay. All right, here we go. So we would have looked at why people make up news, but why is disinformation such a bad thing? Let's look at that one together. So far, I've given you a bunch of silly examples of fake news, but fake news is not funny at all. It can actually be very dangerous. Let's say... Gobinus wants to try to convince you to take a remedy that doesn't work or might even harm you. You can cure every disease by drinking this shampoo, he says. Please don't try this at home. No. 
click here to buy shampoo. Of course, doctors and scientists will say, no, 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 do not drink shampoo. It's dangerous. It doesn't cure anything. So Gilbanus might start writing articles attacking doctors. Hmm. All doctors are evil liars. They don't want you to feel better. So says Gilbus. Unfortunately, some people will believe these articles and that can put their health at risk. Honey, you look very sick. You should see a doctor. No, doctors are evil. Just bring me a big glass of shampoo. Funny as that is, it is true. People may believe it. Good morning, Irene. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> yeah. Or imagine a big factory that dumps toxic chemicals into the ocean. The owner dumping stuff in the ocean. Hey, that's pollution. You should clean that up. I don't want to clean it up. I will, it will cost too much money. And what does the owner do? I know I will pay this fake news expert, this fake expert to write an article for me. And what did they write? Well, there you go. Breaking news. Experts say pollution doesn't exist. That is perfect, says the owner. Hey, honey, experts say pollution doesn't exist. It was all invented just to scare us. Phew, what a relief. I was upset about that pollution thing. And so some people can manipulate the news to their advantage. Yeah. If people stop believing real experts and scientists, well, come on, pollution does exist and it's bad for the planet. La, 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 la. People are not even listening. People will make bad decisions. If they don't believe real experts and scientists, people will make bad decisions. We've heard about people arguing about climate change and all that, haven't we? Hey, Don Litter, relax. Haven't you heard? Pollution doesn't even exist, they say. These decisions might be bad for our health. Shampoo cures every disease. Wow, I better stock up had for the environment. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. And bad for our democracies. Vote for me. If you vote for Mr. Smith, he will pinch your puppies. We don't want that. Oh no. Hey, wait, that's fake news, everyone. Fake news is bad for everyone. Mr. Smith pinches puppies. Let's get him. Hey, leave me alone. I would never hurt a puppy. Mr. Smith said. And because of fake news, people believe that he does. Hmm. That's not funny. You're right. Fake news is nothing to laugh about. And believe it or not, it can get even worse. Oh. Thought that was bad, enough already. But it can get even worse. What happens when fake news blows up? Unfortunately, we won't get into this chapter today. What happens when fake news blows up? Um, we'll go to uh, chapter six instead for today to finish off. But um, I hope that you can find this book. And of course, I'll try to bring it back to story time so we can uh, enjoy the rest of the chapters and learn from them too. So the final chapter that we're going to look at today is six, and it says, how to tell real news from fake news. How can we do that? How can we tell? Great question. Well, let's dive in. Let's start with things to do. Let's start with things that do not mean information is true. 
It was shared by a friend. It was shared by a celebrity or a politician. Lots of people you know believe it. It sounds or feels true. An expert confirms it. Grown-ups believe it. Let's start with things that do not mean information is true. Yeah, these do not mean that information is true. It was shared by a friend. It was shared by a celebrity or a politician. Lots of people you know believe it. It sounds or feels true. An expert, mm -hmm, an expert confirms it. Grown-ups believe it. These things don't make news true, but they don't mean it's fake either. Okay, so how do we know when news isn't true? Step one, think critically. What does that mean? Well, the first step is to not believe and not share everything you hear, especially if the news makes you very upset. Hmm. The first step is to not believe and not share everything you hear, especially if the news makes you very upset. Hmm. Well, let's see the next step. Step two, check your source. Check where the news is coming from. Where did you read or hear the information? Underwear can kill you. Where did you hear that? On TikTok, <laughs> it is a reliable source. TikTok is a social media app. It is not a reliable source. But Lulu Bimblebu said it was true. Lulu Bimblebu is not a reliable health expert either. <laughs> Lulu Bimblebu is a beautiful is a beautician who does makeup videos. It's important to get your information from reliable news media sources. Hmm. Step two, check your source. Where is that information coming from? Is it from TikTok? <laughs> so what news media sources are reliable and what's news media to begin with? News media are all the places where you can get news. Newspapers, magazines, radios, web pages, videos. Reliable news media hire journalists to research and present the news. There are lots of different kinds of journalists. Here are two. MIP is a reporter. Reporters report facts. To do that, they interview people and do research. Willow is a fact checker. Fact checkers make sure that everything reporters like, everything reporters like MIP report is true. I must say that too, that as we've been reading also with, um, we were reading the art of protest and we've seen um, how um, sometimes the mainstream media or this media that is talked about can um can tend to have a certain lens or only report things in one way and i think uh that is also um they need to be we need to critically think about that as well and and uh and really um dig into that news because some news sources like say for example videos that people have taken and shared those those can show at times can show what what's going on and then we might need to dig deeper into that and we know that you know things like police brutality have been revealed because of those videos and may not have been reported on the main news sources. So it's just something to think about as well. MIP is a reporter. Reporters report facts. To do that, they interview people and do research. Willow is a fact checker. Fact checkers make sure that everything reporters like MIP report is true. In an ideal system, yes. A journalist's job is to present information that is true. Breaking news. If I exaggerate or share false information, I might lose my job. In general, professional reporters can be trusted to tell the truth. In general. But that does not mean that it can always be true. In general, 
professional reporters can be trusted to tell the truth because there is a code of ethics that they're supposed to follow. Step three, can you find the same information from credible news sources? Well, let's Google underwear can kill you. Is that true? Hmm, I can't find anything from a professional journalist on that subject. Everything I find is from Lulu Bimblebes on TikTok. <laughs> hmm, yes. Step three, can you find the same information from a credible source, from a credible news source? Step four, remember, how can you tell what's real and what's fake? Step four, is it a fact or an opinion? A fact is something that can be verified. Yes, you can prove it, it's there. That's a fact. 68% of Americans own a pet. I can find proof. An opinion, on the other hand, cannot be verified. It's just something someone thinks or feels. Everyone can have a different opinion. Dogs are the best and, cat, and cats are awful. That's an opinion. I can't, it can't be proven. You can agree or disagree with it. Step four. Is it a fact? or an opinion. Very important distinction. Some people work in the news media, some people who work in the news media are hired to share their opinions. Like these guys, a columnist. Bobby is a columnist. Columnists offer their opinions and points of view. I wrote this. Bobby's Bible underwear should be illegal. So do commentators. Bim, I can't believe the mayor isn't doing anything about underwear. Yeah, Mipa, it's, 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 a, it's a disgrace. He doesn't care about the people. They're there to give their opinions. Columnists and commentators. They give opinions, not facts. They don't have to tell the truth to keep their jobs. Here are some phrases that might give you a clue that what you are reading or hearing is an opinion. I believe, I think, should. It seems, in my experience, obviously, apparently, a lot of people say, I am certain that if you ask me, it's unacceptable. They are the best. Can you think of others? Other phrases that might let you know that something you're reading is an opinion? Yeah, but there are a few. I believe, I think, should. It seems, in my experience, right? And sometimes people will say, in my opinion, So something to think about. But be careful. Major news media can also have confirmation bias. News Network A, news network a likes candidate Milson, so it may mostly show news that makes candidate Smith look bad. Candidate Smith picked his nose again today while News Network B likes Candidate Smith. So it may mostly show news that makes Candidate Milson look bad. And what do they say? Candidate Milson farted in the middle of the press conference. <laughs> okay, so can I really trust anyone? Well, it can be difficult to decide who to trust. If you are not sure if you can trust the source, ask a librarian. Librarians are trained to help you find reliable information. Hmm. Librarians are trained to help you find reliable information. Step five, make sure it isn't a joke. If the news sounds too crazy, it could be a joke. 
Some media make fun of news, politicians, and celebrities by exaggerating or making things up. The news imitations are called satire. They are pretending to be a real news, to be real news, to make people laugh or think. That is different from making something up to mislead people. Right? So yes, make sure it isn't a joke. The news imitations are called satire. They are pretending to be real news to make people laugh or think. That is different from those that are making something up to mislead people. Hmm. Something to think about. To check if something might be satire, research the media source. The Garlic Bulb newspaper. The Garlic Bulb is an American satirical media company. Or research the author. Funny guy. Comedian. Step six. Think about who will gain something if people believe this news. Peanuts make masses grow. Nerbert wants to sell peanuts. Underwear can kill you. Lulu Bimble wants to sell a book she wrote. The governor married a turtle. Nala wants to make people visit a website. Pollution doesn't exist. The factory owner doesn't want to pay to clean up his mess. Mr. Smith pinches puppies. Mr. Milson wants to wants you to vote for him. Derp derp, I am the president and I eat smurfs. Smurfs. Funny guy, the comedian, wants more followers. Just because someone will gain something because of the news doesn't mean the news is fake, but it could be. Mm. It's true. Just because someone will gain something because of the news doesn't mean the news is fake, but it could be. And we have to think about it and look at all those different steps that we've talked about. Step seven, check the quality of the news source. Credible news sources pay attention to writing and grammar. If an article is filled with typos and exclamation marks, uh, it's not high quality. Scorpions are in your sores. Be careful. They spy on you. Online fake news media are also often filled with ads and click buttons. Breaking news. Powdered squirrel toenails make you lose weight fast. Hmm. Mr. Expert says, it's true. I tried it on myself. And look how skinny I am. Yeah, all kinds of things they try to sell to you. Online fake news media are also often filled with ads and click buttons. Hmm. Step eight. Don't just read the headlines. People often form opinions based on just a headline. Breaking news, woman killed by her underwear. Oh my God, underwear is dangerous. But headlines don't always give you all the information. I'll read a bit more of the story. Breaking news, woman killed by her underwear. Semiana Fadabu, 27, was walking down the stairs when she slipped on a pair of underwear that she had dropped earlier that day. Fadabu hit her head and fainted. She was rushed to the emergency room but it was too late. So you see how the headline and the news, the actual news are very different? Yeah. So something to think about. Don't just read the headlines. Step nine, keep your emotions in check. If a headline makes you scared or angry, Take a breath before you share it. We're not at our best when we are thinking with our feelings. Dentists put microchips in your teeth. What? 
That's horrible. Don't share it yet. Think about it. Take a second. And never forget that you have confirmation biases too. Wait, I am already a bit scared of the dentist. My fear doesn't mean this is true. I am going to research more about this before I freak out. Step nine, keep your emotions in check. And never forget that you too have confirmation biases. Step 10, carefully choose who you trust. Carefully choose who you trust. In the end, you will have to decide who you think is telling the truth. We often feel we can trust people we like or admire or people around us to know what is true. But what's not always that, but that's not always the case. Why do you trust? Or who do you trust? In general, I trust reporters and experts who cite their sources. This shows us that they did serious research. Here's what I read before I wrote my article. Two, scientists. They spend many, many years studying their topics. They are pros at doing research. They know what they are talking about. When a majority of experts and scientists agree on a topic, there's a good chance that they are right. 98% of scientists believe that, the, that climate change is real and that it's mainly caused by humans. That's one example. So who do you trust? In general, reporters and experts? And scientists. Phew, it is sure a lot of work to know who to trust. At the beginning, yes, but after a while, you will get very good at it. Just asking some questions about the information is a good first step. And it's important if you are well informed, you will be safer and you can help protect others and the planet. Okay, I will try my best. <laughs> oh, I will try my best. But first, I need a big drink of shampoo. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> and that is the end of our book. But before we go, just again, let me just... um go through these different steps and I'll just read the the um the this the headings and it says um step one think critically how to tell real news from fake news step one think critically and then step two check your source step three Can you find the same information from credible news sources? Step four, is it fact or opinion? Something to think about. And step, step four, next step, step five, make sure it isn't a joke. Is it satire? It could be. Step six, think about who will gain something if people believe this news. But with that in mind, just because someone will gain something because of the news doesn't mean the news is fake, but it could be. So let's ask those critical questions. Step seven, check the quality of the news source. Hmm. Very important. But again, just because it is, it has typos, might not mean it's not true. You might have to check that source, check where they got their information, check the quality of the news source. Don't just read the headlines, read the stories too. Read the full stories. What's the information in there? Like we saw with the news of woman killed by underwear, very different, head, the headline alone and the news and the story, the article itself. <laughs> And um, step nine, keep your emotions in check. Yes. If a headline makes you scared or angry, 
take a breath before you share it. We are not at our best when we are thinking with our feelings. And remember too that we also have confirmation biases, right? For example, we might be scared of the dentist already or might have certain feelings about going to the dentist. So when we see stories about dentists being evil, well, that might play into what we already believe. And then we might think that is true. And that could happen for many other things. Step 10, carefully choose who you trust. And in general, reporters and experts who cite their sources, this shows that they've done research. Scientists, they spend many, many years studying their topics. They know what they're talking about. When a majority of experts and scientists agree on a topic, there's a good chance they are right. And it's important, if you're well-informed, you, you will be safer. And you can protect others and the planet. Yes, if you're well-informed, you will be safer. Critically think about things. Thank you so much for joining in Storytime today. I hope you enjoyed this wonderful book, Killer Underwear Invasion. Yes, lots to talk about in here. How to spot fake news disinformation and conspiracy theories. And I hope that you're able to find it at your local library and get to dive in and read those, even those chapters that we skipped over today because of time. Thank you, thank you indeed for being here. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for joining in Storytime. I'll catch you on the other side of this short break when we're back for more Storytime. Thank you indeed for being Hello, here. Hello Storytime friends. My name is Angela Dalton and I'm an author of picture books. Some you may have even seen read right here on Storytime with Mr. LaMada. I'm excited to tell you about my brand new picture book called To Boldly Go, How Nichelle Nichols and Star Trek Help Advance Civil Rights. It comes out January 17th, and it's an amazing story about the legendary Nichelle Nichols and her role on Star Trek, which she left until a very special person reminded her about the impact that she was making, not just on television, but around the world. And I'm excited to tell you that myself and Lauren Semmer, the illustrator, will be coming here on January 20th to read the book to you and to answer any questions that you might have and to tell you a little bit about the book and how we came up with the idea for it. I hope that you'll join us again on January 20th right here in Storytime with Mr. LaMada. Until then, if you'd like to learn a little bit more about me, please visit me at AngelaDalton.com. Okay, now we got to get back to the story today on Storytime with Mr. LaMada. I hope you're enjoying it. I know I am. Okay, see you soon. Bye. Welcome back. Thank you indeed, Angela Darton. And one more time, congratulations. And our book today was Killer Underwear Invasion. Thank you so much for joining in. This one is written and illustrated by Elise Gravel, and we read it with permission of Chronicle Books of San Francisco. And among the topics in this book that you can read once you have it. It is, what is fake news, which we read here today? Why do people make up news? And um, why is disinformation such a bad thing, which we read here today too? What happens when, pe what happens when, pe when fake news blows up? Why do we believe fake news? And number six, how to tell real news from fake news. Thank you so much for joining in, friends. I am glad that we were here together. Thank you. Thank you indeed. Due to time, we are running away now, running off. Thank you so much for joining in Storytime. Please do join me tomorrow as we'll be reading To Boldly Go. This one coming to you from Angela Darton and Lauren Summer, and it is published by Harper. Thank you so much for joining in Storytime. I hope that tomorrow you can be here with us to boldly go how Nichelle Nichols and Star Trek helped advance civil rights. Coming to you tomorrow. And of course, in conversation with Angela Darton and Lauren Summer. Thank you for being here on Storytime, friends. Absolutely appreciate you. And I hope that you have a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you, Irene, for joining in today. And you say thank you for talking about how to tell what's real information. Well, definitely things to think about. Thank you so much for joining in. Appreciate you, Irene. Good to see you here on Storytime. Thank you indeed for joining in. Soraya, thank you for joining in. And I hope that this title 
continues to make you giggle. And of course, I hope that the information in there continues to add value to your life as well. Thank you so much for joining in Storytime. Absolutely appreciate you. And I know tomorrow it is here, but I hope that your copy arrives soon too. Thank you, Tara McNamara. Erin, thank you for joining us. And of course, Clara out there in Chile, Massachusetts. Thank you so much for joining us today. I appreciate you so much. Thank you indeed for being here. Amanda West and of course, Sarah and Nathan, thank you for joining us. And you are very much looking forward to the book that we read today. I hope that it lived up to expectations and I hope it continues to bring smiles to your faces. Thank you so much for joining in Storytime. And like you say, Amanda West, a win-win book today. Thank you so much for being here with us on Storytime. Absolutely appreciate you all. And um, I'll see you again tomorrow when we're back for more story time and, of course, celebrating to boldly go as it came out on the 17th. But tomorrow we'll be here with Angela Darton and Lauren Summer. Thank you so much for being here, friends. Have yourself a wonderful, wonderful day, wonderful Thursday. It is almost the weekend, so we're, we, we're trudging along. We're getting there. Thank you so much for being here. Much love from me, and I will see you again um, tomorrow for more story time. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Story time with Mr. Lamada. He will be starting soon. Thank you.